When the clients moved in 15 years ago, they didn't really do anything up here, but they needed the space to live in. So they actually did the best they could with this. They ended up designing this as their change room. Major, major impediment to the whole space planning of this is this chimney. It's been decommissioned, they haven't even used it. But it's a problem because where do you put a bed? Where do you put a shower? It's right smack dab in the middle. So it's bye bye baby. See these sexy little windows? They are here not only to let light into this bathroom, but also to let heat in. There's no heat. So in the winter, when they're in the bathroom, they have to actually open these windows in order for some heat to get in. This crazy thing, a wood-burning fireplace on the third floor, they didn't even try to start that one up because they didn't want to burn down the house they just bought. That's leaving as well. On my first visit, I was sort of going, okay, it's really dark here. And I put my hand over here to turn the lights on and my client went, stop! Because as you can see, fire hazard, do not use switches. Like you actually can't use the electrical up here because it's so messed up. They have task lighting, but none of these chandeliers work. None of the pot lights work. It's, it's actually a major fire hazard. But this is the best part of the house. Okay, I, I have this ball because this, this really shows. <laughs> okay, they have tried everything to keep these drawers closed, but they just constantly open. The floors are massively uneven, and that's gonna be one of the first things we do is actually leveling everything out. I mean, it's quite low. The chances of getting more height, according to Rob Nurse, our contractor, is good. They tried really, really hard to get as much storage as possible. So the doors have to open the wrong way because of the, the angle, but gosh, getting in here to get his suits, pretty tricky. This is our favorite, the darling little Hansel and Gretel drawers. Everything is very small, very awkward, and very wrong. There's no privacy whatsoever up here. Like the bathroom door doesn't even work, um, which I guess isn't a huge problem. But you know, they've been clever. Like to get light into that bathroom, they did a little balance here. But I think the biggest concern of this whole third floor is just how tight and claustrophobic it feels. It's almost like you're a mouse, you know, wandering around, looking in this corner and that corner. And <laughs> I just feel claustrophobic up here. We have an amazing plan in place and I can't wait to share it with you. So here we are, we are back. The place looks so different. It's less cluttered, it's more serene, and they love it. When you're dealing with angled ceilings and you want your tub at the end under the window, the question is where do you put your vanity? So I ended up actually designing it so that it's right smack in the middle of the bathroom. It still doesn't cut the light out because you've got passage on either side. It allows you to put a floor length mirror on the other side for changing. And it's kind of an interesting architectural feature. To take it one step further, we created this really cool vanity that has an eight inch thick countertop. Found this incredible Calacatta Monet that just blew me away when I saw it. And I pulled the putty color from there, the cream from there, several shades of green. There's even a tiny bit of blush pink in there. And I brought that into the stool fabric and some of the florals. It's such a yummy countertop. And it looks like it's floating, including some integrated lighting underneath. For the tub faucet, I wanted to do a deck mount versus a freestanding one. I just like the look of it better. So we built this box out of Caesar stone behind the tub that we could mount the faucet on, but it also gives you a great place to put candles, tub accessories, and dare I say, a glass of wine. So we've got tub under the window, vanity and mirror in the center, shower tucked into a corner. We've also got some more millwork on either side of the tub because you just can't ever have enough storage. 
But one of the things Laura really wanted in her brief was a makeup station. It has the same hardware as in the bedroom, but smaller. And then this killer three-sided mirror that we got custom made to work with the angles. And it's great for putting on makeup because you can move the sides. And also her husband is bald and needs a place to shave his head. So it's actually perfect. He can see. <laughs> I don't like personally a space that is too uniform in terms of metals. I always mix my metals. So we kind of started with this faucet because it is a beautiful combination of brass and polished nickel. So I pulled that into the accessories, the faucets on the vanity are brass. And then back in the shower, I went to polished nickel. The whole space has the combination of just those two metals and I kind of like it. So being me, I couldn't do nothing in the water closet. And my client was really, really involved in the wallpaper. We both met in the middle with this fabulous Lewis and Wood wallpaper. And we really wanted to tuck in a small sink. So we got that custom made in Caesar Stone. It's tiny, 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 but it works. And we did the waterworks faucet on it. It's very old fashioned looking, and I love the juxtaposition with the modern sink. Once we got rid of that dreaded chimney, we were able to flip the bedroom from the street side of things to the back of the house, which was a game changer for the clients. The street is a quiet residential street in the beaches, but there's a bus that goes by, it's louder. And in the back, you have this beautiful canopy of trees to look out on. The sun sets back there, which is so much nicer than waking up to a sunrise, because if you are a sleeper like me, you kind of want to sleep in as long as possible. We also were able to raise the ceiling by about a foot, which made a big difference and the floor was made more even because if you remember the ball was rolling quite a bit in a small space like this where you have a knee wall that is 50 inches high it's really hard to get things off the floor so a big part of the budget went into the custom millwork to house all their clothes, their bathroom accessories. There's even a laundry basket in there tucked inside because Laura really didn't want any surfaces to dump clothing on. They don't have anywhere to dump their stuff, so it just goes right away at the end of the day. The paneling is painted the same color as the walls. They're discreet, almost little jewelry knobs that give off a sparkle when the sun hits them. The bed is low lying, it's a design within reach, very mid-century modern bed. The side tables are low and that's it in there. I layered in rugs and colorful bedding, like lots of tones of greens and pillows, but mainly it's just a palette of putty, cream, greens, and that's kind of it. So while the finishes that I chose are all very simple, it doesn't mean they're boring. They create this peaceful envelope that I then layered in the interest. It's been a game changer for them because they were living up here in such a wonky space for so many years that they can't actually believe this is the same space. This is just Laura's retreat. It's the place she goes at the end of the day to kind of unwind and then Rob as well. Like they both just love it up here. And frankly, I wouldn't mind moving in.